And now, what's my line? Brought to you by Stop It Spray Deodorant. Poof, there goes perspiration. Poof Deodorant Body Powder, the body powder you spray. The Nest Shampoo, the new flowing cream shampoo. All in the first truly functional cosmetic containers. Far easier to use. All created by Dr. Jules Montagnier, the famous cosmetic chemist. Time now to enjoy What's My Line? Now let's meet our What's My Line panel, which has just won the Motion Picture Daily Award as the best panel show on TV. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Happy that we have with us again the popular young humorist who also has his own show on Monday nights on another network, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you. And on my left, a uh, lady whom you all know tonight, I notice she's wearing a, uh, a very lovely crown. I'd like you to meet Her Royal Highness Arlene Francis. <laughs> That's very nice, and I'd like to consider you a subject. <laughs> And on my left, it's a great pleasure to welcome back again a gentleman who has been on a vacation in Miami, Florida. Uh, our own good humor man with coat of tan and cheek. <laughs> Why not a cheek? <laughs> Hal Dimples Block. Well, thank you, beautiful. Nothing. You know, it, it's so great to be back. I feel like a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> and on my left, one of the nicest fellas I've ever met. And you know, you've been on television a lot. And while I was away, John, I never missed any of your shows. I never saw them, and I never missed them. <laughs> but I'm only kidding. John Daly. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Watch My Line, presented by Stop It. Once again tonight, we're going to put our cameras close up on a few people who've been nice enough to come and visit us and bring with them their occupations which we hope will be sufficiently difficult to think up to give the panel a little trouble. We hope they'll carry away some prices. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later in the program. But right now, it's time for the experts to meet our first challenger, whose job they've got to spot. So will you uh, sign in, please, sir? William C. Lentaf. Is that right, sir? Would you uh, be good enough to tell us where you're from? From Miami, Florida, John. Oh, Miami. you're not up here by any chance to get Mr. Block and bring him back to the city. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Looks like nice a house detective at the action. <laughs> well, actually, uh, you know Mr. Block's been down in your part of the country, but I don't think you know the other three members of the panel very well. Suppose you walk over in front of the panel for me. Let them meet you. How are you? Uh, may I see your hand? Thank you. All right, Mr. Lantap, will you come over here, please, and sit down next to me? And on the basis of uh, this brief acquaintance that you have had with the panel, we always, at this point, give them a free guess as to what your line may be. And we'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he makes alligator bags. Mr. Allen. I think he makes alligators. Miss <laughs> Fred. <laughs> I think he's in the very successful business of manufacturing Hamburg hats. Mr. Block. <laughs> I think he sells unemployment insurance to Washington Democrats. <laughs> well, I'm afraid nobody has it right. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. Lantaff, and at the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. <laughs> but the panel has got to do. All right, Mr. Lantaff, uh, the rules are very simple. Every time you give the panel a no answer, it uh, costs them $5. We keep a record up here. Ten of these no's, and the important thing is you have then won the game. We give the usual last bit of help. Mr. Lantaff is salaried with that. We'll begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Mr. Lantaff, uh, does your job involve a service of some kind? Yes. Is it a service that uh, makes people happy? Well, that's a qualified yes. <laughs> uh, you mean that uh, the work that you do could possibly make them unhappy in some way? Oh, yes. Uh, is this uh, job something that involves a product of some kind? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Block. Uh, Mr. Lantap, do you deal with men and women? Yes. Well, 
Could you, uh, could I possibly do what you do? Yes. Highly unlikely, but it could happen. <laughs> Never have let myself into that. In other words, it takes no talent, huh? That's right. <laughs> But what it I don't does know how require, to take that applause. What it does require is that people think you have some talent, so you're still barred. You go ahead. <laughs> uh, do you ever appear in front of uh, people? Yes. Do you ever appear in front of a lot of people? Yes. And you're from Miami, Florida? Yes. Do you ever have anything to do with uh, racetracks? <laughs> Conference. Well, he's no jockey, I know that. What are you trying to do, get a tip? <laughs> no, uh, that will be a no answer. We do not come into uh, any relationship to racetracks in this specific... Uh, I thought uh, I'd lost some money to him. <laughs> That's two down at eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Oh, when, when you um, appear in front of these large numbers of people, have they come uh, to see you? or to hear you? Sometimes. Is what you say important in, what, in your work? Yes. <laughs> Would you ever be qualified to perform a marriage service? <laughs> uh, no. no, I don't think so. Afraid not. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, do you belong to any organization, I mean in connection with your work? Is he considered a member of a group, or you mean something like yes, that? Yes, in any way. Uh, <coughs> yes. Yeah, in the loosest, yeah, in the loosest yes. possible sense. In the loosest, loosest possible, possible, possible sense. sense. Right. Now could we tighten it up a little bit? Yeah. Uh, do you perform uh, your, your job ordinarily more than once a week? Ordinarily, yes. <laughs> uh, we've already established that people may be made unhappy. Is that correct? Both happy, Both yes. ways. Mm-hmm. And nice. in the middle. <laughs> Do you uh, ever stand on a stage when you perform or work? Yes, yes. sometimes. Uh huh. Do you make people laugh? <laughs> yes. In all of these specific areas, we'd give you a yes sometimes. Well, that's fine. <laughs> uh, do you tell jokes? Yes. <laughs> Steve, he also makes people unhappy when he tells jokes. <laughs> That's the way I work it, but I didn't know anybody else works it. Uh, do you, by any chance, uh, promote anything uh, like a product? I'm, I'm uh, in the sense that an auctioneer might, or something like that. Uh, in the sense that an auctioneer might. Mm, no, I think we have to give you a no on that, Steve. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Mr. Lantaff seems quite uh, distinguished. I wonder if perhaps he might work for a non-profit making organization. Yes. Uh, is it some branch of the government? Yes. Uh, are you ever in Washington? Yes. Uh, are you elected to office? Yes. Uh, elected to office in Washington and you're not the president. I can see that just as plain. <laughs> Would you be a member of the Senate? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Block. He isn't even Mamie. <laughs> um. Oh. <laughs> He's not. Yeah, I'm glad I thought of that. <laughs> Do we have a little conference? You may have 15 seconds for a conference. I just mean that I think I got the wrong house. Try Congress. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Could you... I just got a flat. <laughs> Could it possibly be that you were in the Congress? Yes. Very good, Miss Arlene. Uh, Congressman William Lantaff of the state of Florida, who uh, is in Washington a good deal, works more than one day a week, often <laughs> appears before crowds, and tells to jokes. Tell jokes. <laughs> and we do hope that. Uh, 
you had some <laughs> fun being here tonight and maybe have some more jokes to tell when you leave. We'll no. never remember. He's right. very representative. <laughs> <laughs> very representative he is. We had a uh, fairly good time with the prizes, and we want to thank you very much for coming up to see us and being on What's My Line. It was nice to have you. Thank here. you, John. Challenger, will you sign in, please, sir? Saul Jacobson. Is that right, sir? Uh, tell us, first of all, where you're from. Franklin Square, New York. Franklin Square, New York. Well, you're close to home, so you can't be tired. Will you take a small hike down in front of the panel for me, please? To do a backflip, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. You come over here and sit down next to me, Mr. Jacobson. No backflips. You've had a chance to look at the panel. What's more, they've had a chance to look at you. So now uh, we will give them the usual free guess, which always comes at this point in the program, and we'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he makes pinking shears. Makes pinking shears. Mr. Allen. I think he's a barber. Miss Francis. I think he's a ticket broker. Mr. Block. I think he's a babysitter on the I Love Lucy show. No. <laughs> Afraid nobody has it right. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. Jacobson. At the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. But the panel will have to dig. <laughs> now, Mr. Jacobson, uh, will you come in just a bit closer? Make yourself comfortable. Get not to me, but to that uh, thing that they call the monster, a microphone. <laughs> uh, you know how the game works. You heard me explain the rules. Every no answer. You get into the panel for $5. We keep the record up here. Ten of these no's, and the game is all yours. The last bit of help for the panel, Mr. Jacobson is self-employed. With that, we'll begin the general questioning with Steve Allen. Mr. Jacobson, is there a product connected with what you do? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you call it a useful product? Definitely. Hmm. Definitely, did you say? Definitely. Does it in any way uh, come into contact with the body? <laughs> uh, could a man use this? Continue yes. This? If a man did use it, would it in any way change his appearance? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Now, Wendell, will you ask that question again? No. No. <laughs> well, then I, I'll ask it again. All right, no, I, if a man did use this, would it uh, change his appearance in any way? Uh, I think we'd have to give you a no on that, Steve. It's a close issue, but actually it would in such a small way as to, I think, be unimportant. It's so funny, be... I had a small way in mind. <laughs> <laughs> One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Would a woman ever use this product? Yes. Is this something... Uh, <laughs> is this something that would be considered in any way apparel? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Block. Would a woman ever carry this with her, though? Yes. Hmm. Uh, would she ever take it out with her if she uh, went to a party? No. <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Have you said that this is not apparel in any way, but it is worn? Well, you we said, said it was not apparel. We haven't <coughs> said it was worn. Well, I would thought... you care to ask that question? No, I wouldn't. I thought Steve had asked that. Excuse me. Uh, then the word is used. This is used. It is used. Would yes. you say that it was used more by men than by women? Yes. Uh, is it worn in, is it used in any way in proximity to the person of the gentleman who uses it? Yes. Is it in any way um, attached or applied to him? No. Uh, small club, it's a conference. <laughs> There is a firm connection uh, between the user and the object, ah. uh, which we will take notice of here and allow you to continue, Mr. Kugelin. Thank you. Boy, I've lost the question. What did you <laughs> <laughs> Something about it being attached. Well, it's English, uh, that's for sure. <laughs> when, when the man is using this, is it visible to other people? Yes. Uh, is it something small enough to be held in the hand? Yes. Does the man use it on the part of his body, or in connection with the part of his body, above the waist? Yes. I was to a small conference. Would you ask that question again? When hmm. it is in use, is it connected with, or close to, the uh, man's uh. body uh, above the waist? Mm, could yes. be. Mm -hmm. Is it at all in the general vicinity of the waist? Mm, could sometimes. be, yes, sometimes. 
Is it made of material? Yes. Is this a cloth type material? Oh, that will be four down and six to go. <laughs> Dave Allen. Made of material. Now, would you ever possibly find this in a barber shop? <laughs> yes. No. no, I don't think so. Five down and five to go, Miss Fancy. Is this, whatever it is, connected with a product uh, that could do any harm in any way? Mm -hmm. Sometimes. <laughs> Uh, by that, I mean, would it be considered uh, in the firearm or related to the firearm family? You mean, does it explode? Does it have a, a, a percussion? Is, is, or... it, is it dangerous? Can you get a bang out of it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we would have to admit it could be dangerous, yes. Um, you said it was made of material? It's made of matter, i.e. material. I see. Is there any metal in the material? Oh, thank you very much. That's six That's down and four to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mr. Block, and we're going to give you one more minute to get this. No cloth and no metal. What else is there? Leather. Leather. Uh, could it be possibly made of wood or leather? Possible. <laughs> Possible, yes. 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 It is, and, and you can see it. It is something that... Uh, could change position. You said it could be in proximity to the waist, but it could be in other place too? If you have a relationship, yes, it could be in proximity to other parts of the user. Whatever that means. <laughs> could it ever be on the hand? Sometimes. Could it ever be in the nature of some kind of a strap or a belt or something like that? Mm, no, I think we'd have to give you a no on that, and we're going to ring down the curtain on uh, well, by it? default. You want to ask Arlene one? Arlene and I both had an idea. You want to ask a question? Is, is it, all right. Seven down and three to go, and is, two questions. Is it connected with holsters or guns in any way? That makes it eight down what? and two to go, but you're getting very close. Actually, uh, Mr. Jacobson, who gets the full award now because he wins by default, sells policemen's nightsticks. Oh. Oh. And look what he brought me! <laughs> No, I don't want to have any trouble with any of you. You see this? It says, John, what's my line daily? And Mr. Jacob says this is to keep the panel. Well, I don't need to say This is one of the few oh, yes, clubs I wouldn't like to belong to. <laughs> well, Mr. Jacobson, as I said, you get the full prize, and our thanks for being our guest. Nice to have you with us, and what's my line? Good night. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends in the panel would certainly recognize our guest on site, so we've provided them with blindfolds. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, right. John. Mm -hmm. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> all right, panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we dispense with all the usual preliminaries, get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you in the entertainment world? Yes. Huh. <laughs> Are you in the acting end? Beg your pardon, Miss Kilgallen, will you repeat that question? Are you in the acting end of the entertainment world? <laughs> <laughs> One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Are you a man? <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. I'm not going to ask if you're Minnie Mouse, but that certainly is a very close resemblance. <laughs> Would you be considered a leading woman? Would you give us a clear definition of leading woman since we have already ascertained that um, well, our guest is not an actor per se? Uh, if, for example, she were in opera, let us say, she would get her man. Oh, I reckon we'd have to give a yes to that. Yeah. Is she, are you in opera? <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Mr. Block. I thought she was going to get her man for a minute. <laughs> what just happened? Are you, uh... Are you, uh, sort of adorable? Everybody seems to like you. I'll much. answer that one emphatically, yes. Uh, are you, uh, say, in your 40s? <laughs> Four down and six to go. Let's not have any trouble. <laughs> All right, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you do something that is rather spectacular in which you do not have to speak? 
what do you mean, Miss Kilgallen? You know what I mean, John. Yes. I mean, does our guest perform in um, some fashion which does not primarily require the speaking of lines if she's not an actress? Uh, <clears throat> I think that would be a no. Five down and five to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, has it been established that she is or is not in motion pictures? No, that hasn't been established. All right, is she or is she not in the motion picture? Right? <laughs> no, you don't. No double doubles. You go on and give me a single. That was one. a triple. <laughs> is she in motion pictures? No. Nope. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Uh, would you have anything to do with the theater? Yes. <laughs> well, uh, do you, you say you are not an actress and you do not sing in opera. Do you, uh, would you be considered a diseuse or a performer that may work in a, uh, a presentation house? <laughs> <laughs> this could be Mammy Eisenhower, we don't know it. Suppose <laughs> you come back, Miss Francis, and tell us a little more specifically what you have in mind. Well, that laugh on Mamie Eisenhower has got me a little nervous. They got a bang on it. Do you, uh, do you come from a theatrical family? Seven down, and three, to go. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Block. Would you like to go out after the show? <laughs> uh, gee, this is tough. You're in the theater, but you don't act. You don't sing. Wouldn't it be funny if she wasn't working? <laughs> I did say that the issue was specific about opera. Were you oh, opera? but do you sing and don't sing opera? <laughs> that high? <laughs> uh, are you a... Do you, do you make records? Yes. Hmm. Uh, have, is one of your records now on sale, one of your more recent records? Yes. Is it... Uh, more or less classical rather than a popular jazz type. Yes. Wish I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> I'll pass the door. All right, Miss Kilgallen. Well, if you're not an opera singer, uh, what are you doing? Well, no, you can't answer that question, but I don't understand this about the classical record. Uh, well, no, the, the question was, were you in opera per se? I mean, that's why I uh, stressed that. Well, are you what is considered a legitimate singer? Hey, wait. I think I got an idea. Uh, may we have a short conference? You may now? have ten seconds for a conference. Wouldn't it be funny if she was related, like, to a president or something? Uh, now, who could it be? Uh, I, uh, Martha Washington. I will be very happy to proceed along those lines. Uh, are you ever in residence in New York City? Uh, do you happen to live uh, on 76th Street when you're in residence? Yes. Street Would proper. you and I ever be using the same elevator? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Miss Dorothy. Are you Margaret Truman? Margaret Truman. Ah! Before you leave us, I know that there's something serious that you want to get to. One of the special reasons that you're here is that you want to share a conviction you have with all of us. Yes, I want to talk a little bit, John, about the March of Dimes. I think it's most important and very vital this year. You know, uh, the polio victims all over the country are helped by the March of Dimes. And 1952 was the worst year, wasn't it, I think? 1952, I think, was the worst epidemic in the history and of... And it takes, uh, I think, it's every... It's four out of five get help from the March of Dimes, people who have polio. Yeah. And I think also that uh, a very important thing to remember is it takes a great many dimes to um, do the work that must be done by the... Certainly does. ...the March of Dimes. Uh, the campaign goes to the end of this month, yes. 31st of January. So we don't have a great deal of time uh, in which all of us are to... Uh, do our part. Sure, uh, sure. I know that um, you yourself have given a great deal of your time and your energy to this great cause. And uh, I think that you'll agree with me that what we're asking all of you at home to do, and those of you who are here in the theater with us, uh, is to do a very little. That is to reach into your pocketbooks tomorrow morning and make your contribution to the March of Dimes in this year, 1953. 
Every penny that you give is sorely needed and will be very well used. And we want to thank you for coming to see us and we'll send in your name to the March of Dimes one check to do the good work that needs to be done. Thank Thanks you. a lot, Thanks Ms. Truman, much. for thank being our guest. Panel, you're to be congratulated. It took you a little time, but uh, <laughs> we gave you a, something a little extraordinary and you caught up with us. And in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give you a preview look at one of our guests whose line our panel is going to be asked to try and identify on next week's program. But first, here's something to remember. Next week at this same time, our panel of experts will be asked, what's my line by this man? Would you know what his occupation is? Could you possibly guess what he does? Well, for the answers to these and a good many other questions, be sure to be back with us again next Sunday night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, when once again, Stop It invites you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. And don't forget What's My Line on Wednesday night on CBS Radio. Until we see you then, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Hal. Good night, John. And good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line. <laughs> This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Trotman production. In association with the CBS Television Network.